You know when you're flying your drone and you don't think you have enough battery life to get that one awesome shot, so you just turn around, come back and land. Well I found a way to double or triple your battery life. So you need to buy four lithium ion batteries. And there's a few different types. The most popular is the 18650 battery. And I'm going to be using it for this battery pack. So for this you're going to need four lithium ion batteries. You're going to need a marker, some tape, solder, and some wires. And you're going to need specifically an XT60 male wire and a JST XH4S. And for this one, it's just an extender, but I'm going to go through and chop off this end so then I can have the wires. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to take all your batteries. And for this, if you have hot glue, that'd be preferable. I couldn't find mine, so I'm going to use just painter's tape. So what you're going to do is you're going to line up your batteries in this exact way. You're going to have your positive, then a negative, then a positive, then a negative. And when you have it that way, you can tape it or hot glue it. Now, once it looks like this, we're gonna take a marker and on the positive, we're going to make a plus. Sorry, this really does not look like a plus. We're gonna make a big negative. And these are going to be our main battery leads. From here, we're gonna mark this as one, the same battery if you go down. It's two, from over, we're jumping to the right, we're gonna mark three, we're going up, we're going to four, from here, from four to five, and five goes down to six, six to seven, and then seven goes up to eight, which eight is your main negative lead. This should go down, over, up, over, down, over, up. And you also are going to need some something metal. Now, if you don't have a piece of metal that you, you can use some wire, which probably could be some leftover wire from this, and you can just do a piece of wire kind of looking from here to here. I prefer the metal because then it holds it all together more and it adds kind of some more strength to it. So you're going to cut this so it's about that far apart. So it reaches the middle of both. And also if you see any sparks, probably stop. So once you have it about that length, we're going to go from two to three with this little metal thing. Try to do the best solder job you can. I suck at soldering, so don't follow my example. So you wanna make sure they look like they're fully attached, just like that. Now that we're finished with two and three, we're gonna go up to four and five and do the same thing that we just did. So from six to seven, we're gonna have this little metal piece. So you're gonna go from your main positive to two. Two to three is going to have a bridge. Jump up from three to four and four to five is going to have a bridge. Five to six is going to have one of those bridges and six to seven is going to have a bridge also. Your main positive and main negative should not have anything there. So you're, we're gonna add solder to your main positive and your main negative. Now with your XT60 male connector, you're going to take your red wire and your red wire is going to be your positive. You're gonna have your XT60 positive to your main positive. So it should look just like that. You have your main positive that's soldered on to your battery lead. So if you have a multimeter, you're gonna to wanna to take it and set it to your DC voltage and you're going to stick it in here and check what it's at. Now what we're going to do is we're going to measure out this connector. So I usually have mine about that far. That's the distance I have it to the top of this. Where if you see with this one, this one's broken, but it goes about halfway. So measure out how far you want it. And I'm going to keep it about that far down. And your main red one 
is going to go with your main red pad. And you have to make sure when you're measuring, you don't want it straight up and you solder it because then it can break because see how tight that is? You want to make sure you have where you're going to have the most flexibility and it's okay if it's a little loose. You just want it so it can flex around. Then I'm going to take some wire cutters. So you're going to cut the wire and we're going to solder it onto this pad. So now that that's in there, we're going to do our second one. And the second one, we're going to run it all the way down. So you want to make sure that you leave them as long as possible. I made that mistake and I had to buy a new one. You're going to run it through the middle and out to two and three. And again, we're going to just pull this out and measure. Make sure this has flexibility on it. So seat two and three. And I should cut it about right there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put it in the middle of both of these. And it should just run all the way back up through here. Now we're going to do this with the second one. So from four to five, we're going to do the third cable from the left. Okay, now we're going to move to the second to last wire, and this is going to get fed through the middle again. We're going to run this to six and seven. So it should look like that. You just have all your wires like that. Now we're going to run your last wire, just like the first red wire, to your ground. So this is going to be your negative lead. It's going to go from your XT60, the black negative connection, it's going to go there, just like your first one. So just like that. And with that, we're finished with soldering. And now all we have to do is to take our multimeter and to double check that this is correct. We're going to stick our negative into the main negative pad and we're going to stick red, I should say 14 volts. Then the first, I should say 10.5, 6, 3.1. Okay, so how it should look is it should get from lower, from higher to lower, from red to black, it should get higher to lower. And that's how it should work. And if it looks just like that, that means you did it correctly. And if it doesn't look like that, um, you messed, I guess you messed up somewhere and maybe it's, a, it's probably a faulty solder joint or something similar to that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our electrical tape and just wrap this thing up like crazy and if you have any heat shrink for batteries or anything like that now is the time to add that now we're gonna just go around it tight not crazy tight but just tight enough and you can add as much layers as you want overlapping it and that's all I'm going to do but if you want more protection on these batteries you can go through and just triple loop it or whatever you want and on the bottom and top that's where you're going to want to add probably about two to three layers and that's where all of your wires are same with up here we're going to just go through to the exact same thing and for these you're going to want to pull them straight and throw them in between your main leads so pull the strap through like that you're gonna pull it through so then all your wires go through the middle and that will save you a lot more headache it'll save you from either accidentally cutting your wire and now for the last part we're going to split our wires in the middle just very lightly make sure you don't break any of them we're gonna run this piece of tape over the top and down the back, and that should. And then after that, the battery should be ready. You can pull it out from 
and it can just be at the top. You can pull it out from in between here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all these wires so they're even. And at this very bottom part, I'm just going to tape them up. So then they're nice and organized. And now it should look like that. I like to throw some painter's tape on the side to then mark what battery this is and then to write down what it needs to be charged at and how and whatever other specs it has. Now you want to search up what to charge your specific battery. These are 18650s and I usually charge this at one amp. And once you get this battery done, you can make more and different types. This was the first battery I've ever done. And you can see it was a worse solder job, but I have way more layers of tape on this battery. And this is my second. I still have more layers of tape. This is my third. These are Molo cell batteries, so that's why these are a lot bigger. Whereas these are just 18650s. These will get you about double the flight time of this battery. Now once your battery is fully charged and you plug it into your drone, you're going to be flying for a little bit and going to realize that it drops from 4.2 to 3.6 volts very quickly. Well, I didn't realize with the lithium ion battery, it will drop to 3.6 volts and stay consistent. Now, when you're flying, you have to just make sure that you're not going to be doing any heavy tricks. What I mean by that is, you know, you you wouldn't be doing like 0 to 100 throttle very quickly, and this is more of like a cruising and cinematic style battery. Now you can get those shots that you would have missed with a regular battery, you can do it with your custom battery. I'm Zane Shaw, and keep flying.